Hi everyone! I'm Rosie and welcome back to my channel! Have you ever had a Thanksgiving where you're worried all day about the turkey and you feel like a crazy person trying to make all the sides at once? By the time everyone sits down for the Thanksgiving feast, your kitchen looks like a tornado went through it and you're ready for a two hour nap. It doesn't have to be that way. Today, I'm going to take you through how I'm preparing for Thanksgiving to ensure that it's a stress-free day so that I can focus on quality time with family. This is a longer style video, so grab a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. This year, I have a pretty simple yet hearty Thanksgiving menu, and I'm going to start the prep two days in advance. Let's get started. On the first day, I'll be toasting bread for stuffing, roasting butternut squash for soup, chopping up lots of veggies, and preparing the turkey. I'm going to start by preheating the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I realized that I have a ton of frozen bread in my freezer, so I defrosted it for the stuffing. I'm partial to cornbread stuffing, but wanted to use up what I already had on hand. I have a ciabatta loaf that I'm cutting into cubes. I also have some of my superfood sourdough in the freezer, so I'll include that as well. While the oven's going, I'll also roast the butternut squash, which will go into the soup the next day. I like to roast the squash because the caramelization gives the soup incredible flavor. I drizzle on some olive oil and then add some salt and pepper. I personally find it really difficult to cut up butternut squash, so it's worth it for me to buy it already cubed. If you have any tips on chopping up the squash, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to move on to the mirepoix, which is just diced carrots, onions, and celery. I'm going to prepare two quarts, one for the stuffing and one for the butternut squash soup. You can usually find already chopped mirepoix in stores, so feel free to grab that instead to save yourself some time. I have about four to five small carrots, four stalks of celery, and one and a half onions in each quart. Next up on the chopping board are mushrooms and onions for the gravy. This is half a pound of Baby Bella's and I'll be chopping up three medium sized onions.
By now, the bread is fully toasted and the butternut squash is caramelized. The last thing I'm going to do today is prepare the turkey rub and apply it to the turkey. I have 3 tablespoons of Himalayan pink salt, 1.5 tablespoons of ground black pepper, 2 tablespoons of onion powder, 2 tablespoons of garlic powder, 2 tablespoons of thyme, 1 tablespoon of dried rosemary powder, and 2 tablespoons of sage. Then I add 3 heaping tablespoons of dark maple syrup. I'm mixing it all together until it forms a thick paste. This is enough seasoning for my 10 pound turkey, but scale up accordingly if your turkey is larger. Massage the rub into the turkey. Make sure you get a generous amount of it into the cavity and remember all those little nooks and crannies. And don't forget the back side. It's going to seem like this is too much seasoning for the turkey, but I assure you, this rub will make your turkey nice and moist and will give it a delicious savory but not overly herby flavor. I'm going to get the turkey into the bag and let it marinate for at least two whole days. I turn the bag inside out, grab the turkey, flip the rest of the bag over, and tie the opening closed. And that's it for the first day of prep. On the next day, I'm going to cook the cranberry sauce, gravy, butternut squash soup, and stuffing. I think all of these dishes actually taste better the day after they've been made so the flavors can come together fully. I'm going to be using two of these 12 ounce bags of fresh cranberries that I have first rinsed. I add about a quarter cup of water so the cranberries at the bottom don't burn. If you have some orange juice or apple juice lying around, use that instead. I like a chunkier cranberry sauce, but the fresh cranberries cook down to a puree, more like the canned stuff. So I add dried cherries and cranberries, and I love the chewy texture these add to the sauce. Stir frequently and let that all cook down. Homemade cranberry sauce doesn't take much time, and it's so much better than what you can buy in stores. While that's cooking, let's get started on the gravy. I'm going to add some grapeseed oil to the enamel cast iron pan, but you can use olive oil too. Then I add the chopped mushrooms and onions from yesterday. I mix my mushrooms and onions together to keep things super simple, but if you kept them separate, you could first caramelize your onions and then add the mushroom. Then I add about half a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm also going to add two cubes of frozen garlic, which is equivalent to two cloves, and a teaspoon of dry thyme. The cranberries are cooking down nicely, and I'm going to add about a quarter cup of agave syrup, but feel free to use any type of sweetener you like. By now, the onions and mushrooms are nicely browned, and I'm going to add two-thirds of this quart of homemade chicken bone broth. I'm reserving one-third of it for the stuffing later on. If you want to see how I make bone broth at home, please let me know in the comments, and I'll make that video in the future. Make sure you scrape up all those little brown bits on the bottom of the pan, and let it come up to a simmer. 
I like to pop any remaining whole cranberries against the side of the pan. <laughs> it's like cranberry bubble wrap. Once the cranberry sauce is done and has cooled down a bit, I'm going to give it a taste and add a bit more sweetener. Add as much or as little as you like. Once the gravy is simmering, I'm going to thicken it with some cornstarch. I have two tablespoons of cornstarch and a few tablespoons of room temperature water. I mix until it's nice and smooth with no clumps. Add it to the gravy and mix until it all thickens up. I'm actually not going to fully season this until I add the giblets and turkey drippings tomorrow. I'll add more salt and pepper to taste then when everything is in. Once that cools, I'm going to store it in a saucepan and I'll finish it off tomorrow. That's it for the gravy today. Now onto the stuffing and butternut squash soup. I like sausage in my stuffing, so I'm going to start by browning a half pound of mild Italian pork sausage. You could use any type of sausage you like, and even breakfast sausage would be delicious. I'm also going to start sautéing one quart of the mirepoix for the butternut squash soup with some olive oil, salt, and pepper. Once the sausage is crumbled up, I add the other quart of the mirepoix for the stuffing. I'm going to roughly chop up some fresh sage and add about two tablespoons to both the stuffing and the veggies for the soup. Once the sausage and mirepoix have cooked down a bit, I add the toasted bread from yesterday, along with the remaining one-third of the quart of bone broth that I reserved earlier. This second quart of bone broth is for the soup. I'm going to add some of it now to help soften the veggies. You want the veggies to be really soft because they're going to be pureed with the roasted butternut squash from yesterday. I add a little extra water to the stuffing along with some salt and pepper to taste. Let that cook down a bit more and stuffing is done! I'm going to transfer the stuffing to an oven safe dish so I can bake it tomorrow to get the top nice and crunchy just before serving. Let's finish off the butternut squash soup. I'm going to puree the roasted butternut squash from yesterday with the cooked carrots, celery, and onions. Once that's nice and smooth, add it to the bone broth. I'm going to transfer the soup to a smaller saucepan to make it easier to reheat tomorrow. The last thing I'm going to do today is give the turkey a nice little massage. The juices tend to accumulate on the bottom, so I like to flip it over on the second day of marinating. Second day of prep, done! 
on Thanksgiving Day, all I have to do is roast the turkey, roast some veggies, and finish off the sides. I'm going to first let the turkey sit at a room temperature for about 30 minutes so it warms up a bit before baking. I'm going to preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I thought about trussing this turkey, but felt that the roasting rack held hold its shape, so I decided not to. If your turkey legs and wings are splaying out too much, you might want to truss it with some kitchen twine. I'm stuffing the turkey with fennel and celery scraps, but you can use any vegetable scraps you have. I'll be roasting some sweet potato, brussels sprouts, and fennel. This is about three pounds of sweet potatoes, and I'm adding a few tablespoons of grapeseed oil, about a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt, and about half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of paprika for a slightly smoky flavor. After about half an hour of baking, I cover the wingtips because they're browning quickly. And I brush some grapeseed oil on the skin now that all the moisture has evaporated off. You can certainly use butter instead. Okay, turkey roasting temperatures are very controversial. Lots of recipes tell you to start baking at a lower temperature and then at a higher temperature at the end to crisp up the skin. I feel like this method prolongs the roasting time, which can dry out the turkey. Instead, I start at a higher temperature, and once the skin is brown to my liking, I turn the temperature down and loosely cover it with foil to avoid burning the top. In a little bit, I'll show you how juicy this turkey ends up being so you can be the judge. After about an hour and 20 minutes of baking, the skin is nicely browned, and I'm going to cover it with foil and bake at a lower temperature of 375 degrees until it's done. This took about an extra hour and 15 minutes. Let's finish off the gravy. I'm going to saute the giblets in some grapeseed oil with a little salt and pepper. Then I'm going to chop them up along with one onion and add them back to the pan to caramelize with some extra pepper and salt. I'm just deglazing the pan with about one and a half cups of water here, but if you happen to have an open bottle of red or white wine, definitely use that instead. Once that's had a chance to reduce a bit, I'm going to add it to the base of the gravy that I made yesterday. Finally, the turkey is done. I'm going to transfer it to a larger pan to rest while I add the drippings to the gravy. Now give it a taste and add more salt and pepper according to your preferences. While the turkey's resting, let's finish off the butternut squash soup and we are in the home stretch. 
This is totally optional, but I'm going to fry up some fresh sage till it's crispy and then sprinkle it on top. Now that you've seen how crispy the skin is, let me show you how juicy this turkey is. Before plating, I just want to take a moment to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. This was my first year on YouTube and I'm so grateful for the incredible support and encouragement you all have given me. I read every single comment and I'm so touched by all of you. I'd like to give a special shout out to Lori, Paula, and CG who have supported me on Buy Me a Coffee, or in my case, Buy Me a Bag of Flour. You've helped me replenish my flour stash so that I can continue making videos on my insanely easy and delicious recipes. From my kitchen to yours, I'm wishing you all a joyous, warm, and safe holiday season. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up subscribe for more easy cooking and baking videos, and say hi in the comments. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye!